The king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Brought to you by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Quaker Puffed Wheat and Rice. Shot from guns. Nice and snappy Quaker Puffed Wheat and Rice. Makes your family breakfast happy. Transcribed from out of the West and into your home, riding the range of mystery and adventure, blazing the trail of Western story and song. Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, that teller of tall tales, Gabby Hayes, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, I'm sure glad you're with us today. Because we've run up against a little problem, and I think you can help solve it. My old partner, Gabby, is going to tell you what happened last week so you'll understand all the details. Aren't you, Gabby? You bet I am, Roy. Buckaroos, we call our story the mysterious loot in Bad Luck Cave. First of all, you better get acquainted with Bob Smith, a feller who's as ornery as a bear being backed into a red-hot campfire. There ain't nobody likes Bob. Some way he got a contract to carry the prospector's gold down to the, from the claims and to the bank in Mineral City. Maybe he got it because the prospectors figured he's so ornery, no outlaw dare try to rob him. Well, last week things begin to happen. Come here, Jack. Sit down. Yes, your Uncle Bob. You've learned plenty from me since you've been here. More than your pa and ma taught you all the time you lived with them. Uncle Bob, you hadn't ought to talk about Shut up, I ain't through. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to give you a chance to pay me back. You see this? Gold, nuggets, and dust. There's more in the saddlebags on that horse at the hitching rail outside. $12,000 worth that I brought down from the mines. I got it this far safe. It's up to you to carry it the rest of the way to the bank. Me? Yes, you. Outlaws are working around here. They're on my trail. They'd like to get me while I'm carrying this much. But they wouldn't bother you. They'd never believe a kid would be carrying gold. Uncle Bob, you could get the law to protect... You know what I think about the law? Yes, sir. The law's no good. The men of the law are cowards, tricksters. I've told you that. I don't have nothing to do with the law. Neither do you. Look what happened to your pa... Law-abiding hombres did that. Now, are you man enough to carry this gold, or ain't you? Well, sure, sure. You needn't think I'm a coward. All, all right. Get on that horse at the hitching rail. Here, take this bag along, too. Belongs with the rest. I'm not afraid of anything. Don't loiter on the way. If you lose that gold, I lose my contract. You won't eat, and you won't have a home. The same as you didn't have when the law got your folks. I'll be careful, Uncle Bob. Dave. Is the kid gone? Yeah, he's gone. Is everything all right then? He'll do the job? Give him 15 minutes start, then ride after him. Catch him where the trail crosses the Arroyo. Hold him up. Take the gold. I know, I know. Stash it in bad luck cave. We've been over that, Bob. I know what to do. Then disappear until the excitement dies down. Keep out of this territory. When it's safe, I'll bring the gold and we'll buy that oil property. We'll be partners. Only, Dave, stash the gold. Don't double-cross me. Don't take it out of the territory with you. Don't you double-cross me. And be sure you meet me later. Go on, Dave. Saddle your horse. The kid mustn't reach the bank. Easy, boy. Better walk across this bridge. The planks aren't very solid. All right, kid. Stop where you at. Put them hands in there. What do you want? I want that gold and I want it quick. You're not taking this gold. Oh, oh. oh a gun went off. I didn't mean to... the gold. I'll get the gold. Maybe you ain't hurt bad. Uh, uh, there. I'll ride on out of here. Somebody could have heard that shot. <laughs> Roy. 
You hear that shot? It sounded like it came from the trail by the Arroyo. Bob Smith was bringing in gold from the mines today. He might be on that trail. Come on. Bob may be in trouble. That loose horse, Pappy. It belongs to Bob Smith, all right. Catch it, will you? Easy, trigger boy. Sure thing, Roy. Looks like we've just missed the excitement. Roy, on the ground, a boy. His horse must have thrown him. Say, you're Bob Smith's nephew, aren't you, son? The young fella Bob took in to live with him a while back? Keep away from me. Uncle Bob told me about you hombres who stick with the law. Your kind isn't pushing me around. You may have pushed Dad around, but not my Uncle Bob and me. Ah, easy, son. Come here a minute, will you, young fella? Let me help you. What is it, Roy? Looks as though he's got pretty well shaken up. No bones broken, though. I caught up the horse, Roy. Say, ain't that the mean young'un that stays with Bob Smith? You bet I'm mean. Hmm. I'll always be mean. Bob seems to have started his training early. We better get this boy home. Maybe if we give him a few lessons on how to ride, he'll tell us what's been happening here. <laughs> doing here? I told you that to... something happened, Bob. Accident. I didn't mean... Somebody may be following you. Wait a minute, Bob. Let me tell you what happened. I was holding up the kid. My gun went off accidental. What? I didn't mean to pull the trigger. The kid started to fight me. You've been training him too good. You shot the kid? I didn't hit him. That don't make no difference. Everybody will be against me for letting a kid risk his neck carrying gold. Well, that fuss would die down, but the fuss over a kid being shot at will make things worse. I didn't hit him. He got scared and I fell over. He fell off his horse, that's all. Every man in Paradise Valley will get on the trail. Hunting us. They'll keep on hunting. Bob, let me finish. Roy Rogers is on the trail. Rogers? Him and his two friends, a girl and old fella. They must have heard the shots. I didn't want to leave till I saw whether the kid had been hit or not, because he's yours and you like the kid. I stuck around so as I could see the, the three of them come riding up, Rogers and his friends. Then I beat it and took the money to Bad Luck Cave like we arranged, and I hit it. Get out of here, Dave. Get out of here. And stay out until I meet you. Folks are going to blame me bad for letting a kid carry gold. Uh, outside. It's Rogers. Yeah. What'll I do? They're here. They trail me. Yeah, maybe not. The kid's with them. They may just have brought the kid back. Go into the other room. Hide there. Let me handle this. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, Bob. Uh... Howdy, Bob. We've got some bad news for you, I guess. I didn't want to be with them law-abiding hombres, Uncle Bob. Just a minute. I'll step outside. Now, what do you folks want here? I'll tell you why I wish we were here, Bob. To break your leg or something. That goes for me, too, Bob. Risking a boy's life. Hold it, Dale, Gabby. Folks around here will have a lot to say to you, Bob. But that can wait until we bring in an outlaw who's low enough to go gunning for a boy. An outlaw? Jack. You weren't held up. They not only held him up, they shot at him. Now, wait. Did anybody see the hold-up man? Does anybody know what he looks like? I saw him, Uncle Bob. He's a small fellow and kind of dark. He seemed awful nervous. He was riding a black horse. I know who he is, then. What's that? And I know where he is. Inside my house. Talk low now. Don't show any surprise. He thought Jack wasn't carrying all the money, so he came here after the rest. Now, don't be excited. I acted as if I didn't know nothing before because he's got a gun on me right now. I might not have said nothing except he hurt you, Jack. Pappy, let's go in after that outlaw. Be a pleasure, son. We won't have to risk our lives. He thinks I'm scared enough, so I'll protect him. He'll come out here if I call to him. I'm sure he will. All right. Try. Just don't reach for your guns until you have to. If he saw you had your hands on your guns, he might come out shooting. Go ahead. Call him, Bob. Dave. Oh, Dave, come out here, will you? There's some friends of mine here. They're going to help us. Is he coming, Roy? Sure enough, he is. It's all right, Dave. This is Roy Rogers. Somebody held up Jack. Rogers wants to help us run him down. Sure, I'll be glad. Oh, oh. There, I got him. I got the hold-up man for you. Let's take Bob, Happy. No, no, Dave pulled a gun. I had to shoot. That man didn't pull a gun. You shot without giving him a chance.
Butteroos, from then on, we had more surprises and excitement than a dog does when he starts worrying a porcupine. I'll tell you all about it just as soon as we hold a little conference on good eating for the first thing on a summer's morning. Quaker puff wheat and rice. Shot from guns. Nice and snappy Quaker puff wheat and rice. Make your family breakfast happy. It's terrific. It's sensational. Here's an almost unbelievable offer. A chance of a lifetime. Yes, here's a chance for you to get two packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice absolutely free. That's great money-saving news for Dad, Mom, the whole family. Yes, the whole family goes for these famous cereals shot from gun. They're ready to serve crisp. Fresh, right from the package. And you can have not one, but two packages absolutely free. Here's all you do. Hurry to your grocer. Buy two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or two packages of Quaker puffed rice or one of each at the regular price. Mail us two Quaker money-back guarantees from the side of the two packages. In your letter, state price you paid and name and address of grocer. Include your own name and address and mail to the Quaker Oats Company, Department 127... Chicago 77, Illinois. That's the Quaker Oats Company, Department 127, Chicago 77, Illinois. By return mail, you will receive the full price you paid, plus three cents additional for postage used on your letter. Payment limited to one per family. This sensational free offer is for a limited time only. So hurry, ask your grocer for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the famous big red and blue Quaker package. Buggeroos, don't you go thinking young Jack was a dumbbell. If somebody learns you that all law-abiding folks were varmints, and you didn't have a chance to learn different, you believe it too, just the same as Jack did. Well, Jack's uncle, old Bob Smith, called to the fella he claimed pulled the hold up. It was Dave Wyatt, and Dave come out. Then Bob started shooting. Peppy, come on. We'll take Bob. Right with you, son. Stand back there. I've still got a few shots left. I'll head him off here, Roy. All right, Bob. Let loose. Let loose of me. Here, I'll take him. Now I got him. Yeah. Yeah, you got me. But wait now. Let me explain. Well, start explaining, then. You bet. With this. Back away, Michael. Oh, Roy, you've got a sleeve gun. Here, now use it. Captain Uncle Bob, that's it. You got him now. You bet we have, Jack. You can help now. You can take their guns. Sure, Uncle Bob. You're a real brave fella, ain't you, Bob? Sending a boy for our guns. You know what we'd do to you if you tried it. Here's the guns, Uncle Bob. What next? Climb on your horse. Then I'll get on mine. We make a good team, don't we, Uncle Bob? We know how to handle law by Norbury. What that young pup needs is a good spanking. I'd like to give it to him, too. Stand steady, you three. Don't try nothing. All right, Jack, we'll get out of here. Son, I'm going to get me some six-shooters, and I'm riding after that pair. You won't be riding alone, Pappy. Oh, oh. Roy, listen. Oh, what's this? He's not dead, Roy. This man Bob shot. He's trying to talk. Well, let's see here. What is it, fella? What are you trying to say? Um, bad luck, Kay. Bob will go to bad luck cave. Bob Smith will go to bad luck cave. Is that it? Oh, Oh, I'm afraid he can't answer now, Roy. Oh, I guess he can't. Well, we'll stop in town and get some guns. Then we'll head for the cave. If Bob isn't there, we'll ride until we find him. Nobody's around the cave entrance anyhow, Roy. Keep off to the side. Don't make a target of yourself. The horses ain't in sight, but of course they could have rode right in. We'll find out whether they have or not. Trigger boy, let's see if there's another horse around here. Call to him. A big whinny now. <laughs> Good work, boy. I'm sure glad I learned you to use your head in cases of this kind, son. Did you learn Trigger how to whinny too, Gabby? Why, sure I did. <laughs> now, just a minute. There it is. Now we know. They're in the cave. Come on, we'll blast them out. Bob! Bob Smith! We know you're there. You may as well come on out. You come on in if you want us, Rogers. Only be careful. The minute you get within sight, we'll let you have it. He said us, Roy. He said come in and get us. 
He still got the boy with him. Bob, you think a lot of that boy, don't you? I'll give you a chance to send him out before I come in. That way, he won't get hurt. Don't kid me, Rogers. You're too chicken-hearted to come after me while the boy's here. The low-down porcupine. He's got us, Roy. I'll make you a bargain, Rogers. I'll trade you the boy for an hour's start. Promise to give me one hour before you take up my trail, and I'll turn the boy over to you. No, no, Uncle Bob. How about it, Rogers? There's nothing else we can do, Roy. You can't turn me over to him, Uncle Bob. They're law abiders. They always stuck by you. It'll get the boy out of trouble, son. All right, Bob. You've made a deal. Send him out. Please, Uncle Bob. You know what kind of offers they are? Get out there, I said. I've got to have my chance. Come on, Jack. We won't hurt you. His face is sure clouded up, ain't it? Don't move until the boy's here, Bob. We'll tell you when to leave. That's it. Over here, Jack. Watch for tricks, Pappy. I'm ready, son. He gave me away. He gave me away. All right, Bob. You've got one hour. Start moving. So long, Roger. The flat-headed pigeon. Well, you aren't going to keep your promise, are you? Sure we'll keep our promise, Jack. Dale, Pappy, we'd better make good use of this hour. Suppose we go in the cave and see if we can find out why Bob headed here and why Dave knew he would. Say, these bags are the kind miners use for shipping their gold, Pappy. They're the ones that were taken from the boy in the holdup this morning. I'll bet on it. But they're filled with rock and gravel, not gold, son. I wouldn't be surprised if Bob Smith and Dave Wyatt were in partnership on that holdup. Well, Roy, Bob shot Dave. One of them could have pulled the holdup. Well, Dave done that. Why, shucks. Young Jack described Dave to a T before Dave ever come out of the house. All right. We'll say Dave pulled the holdup. Afterwards, he brought the sacks here to hide them until the excitement blew over. Then he and Bob intended to meet and divide the gold up. Gold, there ain't nothing here but gravel. That means one of them double-crossed the other. Either Dave took the gold and filled the sacks with gravel after the holdup, or else Bob did it before the holdup and gave young Jack nothing but gravel to carry. That's why Bob shot Dave the first chance he got. So as to get rid of him before Dave could get wise. Shucks. I know it all the time. Well, the hour's up. We better start hitting the trail. You got any idea where the trail is? If Bob did the double crossing, Pappy, the gold may still be at his place. He didn't have a chance to take it along when he left. And it'd sure tempt him to come back, wouldn't it? Only maybe he's back already. We'll have to chance that. Suppose we get Dale and the boy and start riding. Roy, we've waited long enough. We ought to be hitting the trail instead of sitting here in Bob's house. Roy. Yes, Dale? Bob's outside. He's just ridden up. Over to the window. So we can see. There, there by the hitching rail. He's getting off his horse. Didn't I tell you he'd be here if we waited long enough? He's walking towards the house. Don't move anybody. Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob. Something's going wrong. He says we're here, boy. He's going back to his horse. He started to run. Take care of things. I'll go after him. Son, he's on his horse. Bob! Bob, I'm coming after you. Trigger, trigger. Here, boy. We've got to do some riding and do it fast. our last chance to tell you about our almost unbelievable offer. So hurry, hurry to your grocer. Yes, act fast. And here's how you can get two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice absolutely free. That's two packages of the famous ready-to-serve cereals shot from guns. They're yours free. Simply buy two packages of Quaker puffed wheat or rice or one of each at the regular price. Mail us the two Quaker money-back guarantees from the side of the two packages. In your letter, tell us the price you paid and name and address of your grocer. Include your own name and address and mail to the Quaker Oats Company, Department 127, Chicago 77, Illinois. By return mail, you'll receive the full price you paid, plus three cents additional for postage used on your letter. But hurry, time is running out on this great free offer. Quaker puffed wheat and rice. 
Make your family breakfast happy. Come on, Trigger Boy. Let's take it. Move on up. We'll get him, boy. Ah! I'm taking you. I'm taking you off your horse right now. Oh, I've got you, Bob. I'll kill you yet, Roger. All right, Bob. Now let's do some talking. I got a gun on him, Roy. He won't do nothing funny now. Stay here, Jack. That robber was a frame-up, wasn't it, Bob? You can't prove it was. Then how come the gold is in your house? And how come you rode here to get the gold? You don't know I rode here for the gold. I didn't even go in the house. Then the gold is in the house. He just admitted it was, Roy. You emptied the bags when you brought them here from the mines. You filled the bags full of rock and gravel. You gave them to young Jack and had Dave pull the hold up. Prove it. Prove it. Stand steady. Stay right where you are. You told Dave to hide the bags in the cave until the excitement was over. You told him you'd split the money. But there wasn't any money. You had it all. You were going to run out on Dave. Yeah, prove it. Just prove it. Maybe we have already. Dave was still alive when you rode away this morning, Bob. Dave was still alive? I, I didn't kill him? Bob, why did you go back to the cave? You knew those sacks were filled with gravel, not gold. Well, one of them had gold in it. The one I showed Jack before he left for the bank. When I left after the shooting, I didn't have a chance to take nothing with me. I needed money of some kind if I was traveling. I didn't know whether I'd be able to get back or not. Uncle Bob! Pappy, you think you can take this bombing in to the sheriff? Be a player, Roy. Be a great player. Well, go ahead, then. Oh, uh, when you get back, don't be surprised if we have company. What kind of company? Why, uh, Dale and I talked things over, and we thought we'd like to have Jack stay with us. That is, uh, if you care to, Jack. Say, that's a good idea. I learned you things just like I learned Roy. Only I'm off strict. I don't allow my scholars to do no fooling. How about it, Jack? But Uncle Bob always said you law-abiders. He always said... I don't know. I can't figure who to trust now. Jack, you just tried trusting Roy for a while. There's a fella who'll never let you down. He'll come with us. Tonight anyway, won't you, Jack? I don't know. Suppose you catch Trigger and ride him over. Trigger? Why, Roy, you aren't going to let him ride Trigger, are you? Why not? We want Jack to be a good rider, so he may as well learn on the best horse there is. Hold on there, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> I'm the fella that learns people around here. You ain't no learner. I was just going to explain that, Pappy. Gabby really is the one who learns people, Jack. And usually, uh, I don't let anyone else ride Trigger, but, uh, well, we, we both feel pretty good right now, so we'll make an exception this time. So, go on, son. Get your foot in that stirrup and have some fun for once in your life. Buggaroos, Jack is coming to live at the Double R Bar with us for a while anyhow. But he's been learned a lot of wrong things. Roy and Dale and I have been kind of worried. We were wondering what you'd think. Do you believe if we treat Jack right, he'll straighten out and forget his bad ways? Or do you think we ought to do something else with him? Huh? Well, we'll see. It's music time now. Roy and Foy Willin and the writers of the Purple Sage. Yep, everybody's all tuned up. So let's listen to them. Though I build me a palace on Main Street in Dallas, or buy me a villa out in old Amarillo, my heart will always be part of the Lone Prairie next to the X in Texas. Though I go to El Paso for boots and the lasso, you won't find me roosting down in Austin or Houston. I'll always hurry back, back where I built my shack, next to the X in Texas. Just keep this in mind, I'll be easy to find. I'll never roam far from the old Lone Star. I'll be on tap where the X is. Right smack in the middle of a map of Texas Though there's no gal on this earth as cute as mine in Fort Worth My hut's still my mansion and I won't quit my ranching My horse is still my pal, boss of the whole corral Next to the X in Texas The stars at night are big and bright Deep in the heart of Texas 
the prairie sky is wide and high. Deep in the heart of Texas, the sage in blue is like perfume. Deep in the heart of Texas, reminds me of the one I love. Deep in the heart of Texas. with a special message. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that forest fires are a terrible thing. Nine out of ten forest fires are man-caused. They're due to carelessness. So, if you're in the woods this summer on a hike, picnic, or a camping trip, be careful of matches and campfires. If you have a campfire, drown it with water before you leave. Then stir it up and pour water on it again. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Well, that's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Don't forget, smiles are made out of the sunshine and the frown from a rainy day. The Quaker Oats Company presents the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed each week at this same hour with the writers of the Purple Sage, Gabby Hayes, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Republic Pictures' great star in person, Roy Rogers. Remember, every time you want a delicious hot breakfast, enjoy heaping bowls of Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. Doctors say the more often youngsters eat a good oatmeal breakfast, the better they grow. They say that because a recent survey shows only one school child in five gets the kind of breakfast he needs. So for your hot breakfasts, pack away nourishing Quaker oats. Remember, Quaker and Mother's oats are the same. Republic's latest Roy Rogers picture is Susanna Pass. And Gabby Hayes may now be seen in the Paramount release, El Paso. This is Art Ballinger speaking for the Quaker Oats Company. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Yeah.